Hey, what's up? It's Jesko from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. So there's one piece of advice that gets spread around often that I want to discuss with you today. And that is that you'll often hear that you need to measure your room first. But in my experience, this is actually bad advice. And what I'm here to tell you is that you shouldn't measure your room first because what usually happens is not only won't it tell you anything useful, but it'll actually delay you from doing what you need to do. It'll, it'll just confuse you. It will have you turning in circles and even stop you from doing what is actually necessary. Obviously, the underlying question be behind measurements or when we're, we're getting into measurements is what are we trying to get out of these measurements in the first place? And the, the usual answer is, well, I want to figure out what's wrong with my room. I want to figure out where I have problems so that I can fix them, right? And I get that. If you're faced with this very kind of nebulous problem of your room sounding bad and it's very hard to grasp and to kind of figure out what's going on, it's really easy to latch on to kind of any, any tidbit of hope and and think that there maybe there's this magical solution out there that will finally kind of sort this all out for you and tell you what you need to do. But if somebody says that, it always reminds me of the movies, right? So you know that typical scene where like a couple drives around in their car in the middle of nowhere and then the car breaks down and the first thing they do is they get out and they pop the hood and they look under the hood. And I'm always like, what are you trying to find? Like, you're not a mechanic. What do you think is going to happen? You're going to pop the hood and there's going to be like a magic arrow floating in space pointing at like this piece that you need to like fix or like this screw that you need to turn. I mean, that's not how it works, right? And it's the same with measurements. You won't find a manual in there that somehow magically tells you to like turn this, fix that, replace that. That's just not how it works. No measurement is ever going to tell you where you need to place a certain acoustic panel, for example. That's just not how it works. And the reason is that it's really, really, really hard to deduce anything beyond the obvious from a set of measurements, especially in small rooms. The, the acoustics is extremely messy. It's just acoustic effect on top of acoustic effect on top of acoustic effect and they're all piling on top of each other and especially in like a fully untreated room there's so much going on that's all just like crunched together mushed together in this set of data that it becomes almost an unsolvable puzzle to kind of try and pick apart and figure out what is what okay well sure it can be done but it is just so laborious and so time intensive and so complicated that in practice, especially for us DIYers working like on a time and, and money budget, it basically doesn't become worth it to do this kind of analysis. There are, for just about anything, any problem that you're trying to solve, there are ways to do it without measurements that are usually quicker and easier right? So in my opinion, why would you go down this route of trying to figure something out with measurements when it's most likely just going to have you diving down into a rabbit hole that you're not going to get out of? It's going to make you turn in circles, it's going to confuse you. So why do that instead of finding or following an approach, a process that is easier, quicker, uh, and more painless to do, and ultimately just gives you better results faster? So then obviously the question is, well, what can we use measurements for in this kind of home studio DIY scenario? Or where do, how does it make sense to incorporate measurements? Well, first of all, you just have to realize that you're not trying to use measurements to figure out what you need to do, okay? You can use measurements to figure out whether what you have done already is taking you in the right direction. Yeah, so it's definitely valuable for that just to get a kind of solid confirmation in data that you're taking the sound in the room in the right direction. Yeah, but most importantly, I think for us DIYers, for us home studio folks, it's actually about those obvious things that measurements can uncover that really help us understand more just in general 
how the sound in small rooms work, right? So we're not trying to identify single problems and try figuring out how to fix them, but rather we're just trying to grasp and get gain experience, get an idea of just how bad room mode problems actually are in practice. Just broader picture, right? Just how much reflections cause comb filters and mess up the frequency response in general, right? Just how varied the decay, the, the reverb time, if you will, the decay time of a room can be looking at low frequencies in relation to high frequencies, high frequencies, for example, right? So I think that's where it's helpful to give you an idea of the general aspects of the acoustics in a small room and what they might look like when you actually measure them, okay? So obviously one thing to always keep in, in mind though, one thing to always remember with this is that measurements do not represent sound in the same way that we hear sound, right? Our hearing apparatus does a ton of processing on top of just collecting raw data. So measurements only collect raw data though. So it's, it's, it's a matter of interpreting that data in, in order to understand uh, or in order to figure out, in order to get a better idea of how that relates to what we're hearing. All right. So, but that's just, that's, that's a, a longer conversation to have, and I'm not going to get into it in any detail right now. But the important thing is to just keep that in mind. Measured data does not mirror how we hear sound. Okay. And once again, that's one reason why it's not really worth spending a ton of time trying to decipher measurements. Yeah. We're, we're trying to, if anything, get a broad picture of what's going on and maybe also if we're doing before and after measurements in our rooms to get an idea of whether the work we have done is taking us in the right direction and of course if you want to dive even deeper into this i've got a home studio treatment framework prepared for you that you can download at the link in the description it's basically my five step process that I go through to treat rooms and that will show you exactly what to focus on, uh, how all those different steps relate and how you can work through them so they build on top of each other. And obviously measurements are in there as well. To, so, so make sure you download that if you want to have a more detailed idea of exactly when to perform measurements and what it is you're looking at, what it is you're, you're trying to achieve with those measurements as part of a bigger process, right? So again, make sure to download my home studio treatment framework at the link in the description. All right, that's it for now. Let's keep learning to trust our ears and get back to having fun making music. I'll see you in the next video.